सेव किया था ना मैं सिर्फ इसलिए गया था क्योंकि उसने मुझे कॉल किया दैट्स इट बट लिसन तो सेव इट फॉर समवन एल्स जिंदगी में सेव करना जरूरी है मगर जब बात पैसों की हो सिर्फ सेविंग से काम नहीं चलेगा इक्विटी म्यूचुअल फंड्स में इन्वेस्ट कीजिए और अपने सेविंग्स को आगे बढ़ने का मौका दीजिए म्यूचुअल फंड इन्वेस्टमेंट्स आर सब्जेक्ट टू मार्केट रिस्क रीड ऑल स्कीम रिलेटेड डॉक्यूमेंट्स केयरफुली टुडे टेक्स नोटिस ऑफ समथिंग वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग इंटरेस्टिंग इंट्रीगिंग समवॉट सरप्राइजिंग बट आई विल आर्ग्यू इन द कोर्स ऑफ टाइम टूडे why not entirely unexpected developments on not just the political front but politico cultural front that essentially is the rss chief mohan bhagwat making this very open and very very overt outreach to muslims in the country so he visited a mosque in delhi on thursday then he visited a madrasa so he met the imam of this mosque at delhi's kasturba gandhi marg or what or what used to be called karzan road in the past this imam umar ahmed ilyasi also happens to be the chief of an organization called aiio all india imam organization now just for clarity and a and a health warning this is not the only or the apex organization of imams in the country there is no such thing as one organization of imams but this is an important organization but much more than how important this organization is or how, or how important this imam is the fact that the chief of the rss goes to a mosque has a sizably long meeting with the imam behind closed doors after which the imam says nice things about the sarsang chalak as the rss chief is described and rss is own media head says nice and conciliatory things after this is very important this has political significance this has cultural significance so he didn't stop at this mohan bhagwat he also went to a big madrasa madrasa tajweedul quran in azadpur azadpur is in north delhi that is where the big sabzi mandi or the vegetable wholesale market in delhi is so that is where there is a big madrasa so he went there he talked with the maulvis there he also had a conversation with the students there so that again is an important change now this has happened not all of a sudden and that's the reason i said this wasn't exactly unexpected this wasn't unexpected because a pattern has been building up for the past 2 years i will go into that as we go along now who were the people who accompanied him at these meetings so he was accompanied by krishan gopal and ramlal senior leaders senior functionary functionaries of the rss and also indresh indresh has for a long time been the rss's face and the main contact point with the muslims of india so all of rss's muslim outreaches have been carried out by indresh ji you know senior people in the in the rss usually or in the bjp also we usually have suffix g to their names so krishan gopal ji ramlal ji and indresh ji they were they had gone with him now this came just after another significant conversation he had had and again this was not a hidden conversation so nobody can say i scooped it that this happened because this was done not only in full public view but this was meant to be in full public view and to be ta- and to be taken note of by the media this was his meeting or an interaction the rss chief had an interaction with five significant well known educated modern muslims and these are muslims of some substance so these muslims were sy qureshi a former chief election commissioner najib jang again a former ias officer whose last posting was as lieutenant governor of delhi shahid siddiqui a former member of parliament and editor who owns a newspaper nai duniya urdu newspaper also general zamiruddin shah retired from indian army who has served in critical areas including in gujarat leading the forces that controlled the riots in 2002 zamiruddin shah also wrote a very significant book which was discussed a great deal titled somewhat provocatively sarkari musliman in fact he also featured in a walk the talk interview with me on ndtv i will share a link with you you can see it there he also happens by the way 
uh, Nasiruddin Shah, the actor, happens to be his brother. Now, Zamiruddin Shah and also Saeed Sherwani. Saeed Sherwani is a Delhi hotelier, but he's from the famous or the well known Sherwani family. You remember Salim Sherwani, the politician who's been in many parties, starting with Congress. So, his brother. So, these five people that is S.Y. Qureshi, Najib Jang, Shahid Siddiqui, General Zamiruddin Shah, and Saeed Sherwani, five Muslims, prominent Muslims of consequence. He had met them just the previous day and these people were then on TV channels and what happened at that meeting and what was discussed and how do, it, how do they look at this outreach, you can also catch it in the print debates. Three of them have spoken with my colleague Jyoti Malhotra in the print debates and that will also be up for publication very soon. I will share a link with you so you can check it out there also. Very, very significant moves these. Now, what are the things that RSS chief has been saying to all these people? Even after the meeting, even after his visit to the mosque and the madarsa now, Sunil Ambekar, who is the Akhil Bharti Prachar Pramukh of the RSS, uh, also an author of many books. You can see his latest on my screen. And he said, look, the central message is that Hindus and Muslims of India are the same. There is no distinction. We have the same DNA. We have, this, we have the same ancestry. It's just that our method of praying, our method of worship is different. So that is the only distinction. Otherwise, we are the same people. Sir Sang Chalak himself has said recently that anybody who tells Indian Muslims to leave India is not a Hindu. So this is part of the same outreach. And then he go also goes on to say that important thing is, forget the rest, forget the noise, the important thing is that Muslims are inviting us and we are accepting that invitation and going. So the two sides are talking. That is the significant thing. One is inviting, the other is responding. Now, where is this line coming from? Same DNA, same ancestry. This started in 2021 with the Sarsang Chalak's address to the Muslim Rashtriya Manch, which is an RSS affiliate. He said then that Hindus and Muslims have the same DNA, same ancestry, and anybody and anybody who tries to make a distinction is not is, is not a nationalist, is definitely not a Hindu. So he said that. June 2022, that is just a few months back, and we had then uh, dedicated one episode of Karta Clutter to that statement also. He said that, look, we hold the Gyanvapi site in particular reverence because it is, it is part of a very significant temple complex. But while that is being dealt with by the courts, we are in the courts, Hindus are in the courts, we should also stop finding disputes everywhere, so stop looking for shivlings under every mosque. So that was seen as a kind of signal to say, now that is the politics there is that look, Ayodhya, Varanasi and Mathura, three significant and controversial temple mosque sites. If those three are settled, obviously in his case, in the Hindu's favor, then the country can have a move on and also intercommunal relations can move in a different direction. That is his point of view. That is the RSS's clearly stated point of view. Now, there have been some reactions to this. I will also share with you a story that Madhuparna Das, my colleague, has done on these visits. She is also quoted in that story. Some scholars, Nilanjan Mukhopadhyay. She is also quoted Salman Khurshid, the Congress leader a preeminent Congress leader who happens to be a Muslim. And he says, look, all this sounds very good, but we have to wait and watch to see if this is matched in the RSS's actions. And he said that, look, if the RSS is looking for a closure to all disputes between Hindus and Muslims, that's an excellent idea. But nobody would complain. But we have to see if there is any gap between what is stated and what is done, between speech and action between words and action and he says it look modi ji says sabka saath sabka vikas so it is also possible and it's also a concern that mohan bhagwat now saying the same dna so same same dna his is his equivalent of sabka saath sabka vikas but at the bottom of all this bigotry victimization of muslims and discrimination remains that is what salman khurshid is saying now see some of the other lines that Mohan Bhagwat has spoken and you can read between the lines or you can dissect them as you wish. He said, politics cannot be a tool to unite people. 
and then he elaborates. He says, politics cannot be a tool for uniting people, but it can be a weapon to distort unity. Now, this is very interesting and intriguing because this comes at a time when Rahul Gandhi is leading a march to unite people. And what is his tool or instrument to unite people? It is politics. Here is RSS chief saying that politics cannot be a tool for uniting people, but can be a weapon to distort unity. Right? So this is the opposite argument, the contrary argument to what Rahul Gandhi is doing right now through his march, using politics to unite. Sir Sanchalak says politics cannot unite, politics will distort unity. So what is it that unites in the RSS chief's worldview, in Mohan Bhagat's worldview? Mohan Bhagwat says that, look, it is, it is nationalism and glory of ancestors that will unite people. Now, nationalism, yes, uh, everybody will say yes. Glory of ancestors will then be a debatable issue. And this is something that we will hope that the RSS chief and the RSS itself elaborates on going ahead. In fact, two weeks from now is the Shara, so the RSS chief will deliver his much of it did annual address and let us see if he elaborates on this there. Now in the history of the RSS, we've been looking for instances of RSS chiefs going to mosques. So we find one more that is K.S. Sudarshan who was Sar Sanchalak before Mohan Bhagwat, I think retired in 2012. It seems that he had visited a mosque that is Jamiyatul Ulema's headquarters, Masjid Nabi, not far from this office uh, where I speak from and that is what Senior RSS leader, senior, senior RSS uh, voice Manmohan Vaidya tells my colleagues, but we are not able to put a date to it. After retiring from the RSS, Sudarshan ji had once again expressed his view to go and meet Muslims on Eid in Bhopal. In fact, he was a bit of a maverick, so he decided to go by himself as if on a whim to Tajul Masjid in Bhopal and BJP leaders and RSS leaders got worried that there might be a safety issue. So Babulal Gaur, who is a former chief minister of Madhya Pradesh and then was urban affairs minister, he dissuaded him from going and he said that it's a better idea to invite some senior Muslims or Muslim opinion leaders, Muslim spiritual religious leaders to come and meet him where he could greet them over the Eid. So that's what happened. So RSS going out to meet Muslims in such a proactive manner is a very significant thing. Which brings us to the analytical part of this episode of Kartak Letter and our conclusions as to why this is happening. This is not opinion, These are this is analysis as to why this is happening. So one, as I talk to people in the RSS, in BJP, around them, they don't need any more polarization because they know that polarization of vote in India on Hindu-Muslim lines is now complete and looks like will last a very long time. So they think that they don't need to do more and more polarization proactively, proactively because they have enough. They also think that in the foreseeable future, at least in the foreseeable future, Muslims are not going to vote for the BJP because after all, RSS always has the BJP's interest at its heart and vice versa. In fact, in the BJP's case, it's also the RSS's ideology in its heart and, it, and on its mind. For the RSS, it is the BJP's political interest in its heart. So they know, one, the Muslims are unlikely to start voting for BJP no matter what you do in the foreseeable future. At the same time, enough Hindus are voting for, uh, for the BJP. So the objective of awakening Hindu consciousness, as they call it, the objective of awakening Hindu consciousness has been achieved. There is no need for further polarization. Muslims will not vote for, uh, for the BJP. So there is no need to wait for that. That will not happen. At the same time, can you ignore 20 crore plus fellow Indians? whose numbers will grow and while their population is not increasing as fast as a lot of people would like to suggest, especially on social media, it's not as if Hindus are going to become a minority in India in the next 30, 40, 50, 100 years. Everybody's population growth is coming down. Hindus, Muslims, Christians, six most of all. In fact, if you look at all data, particularly from National Family Health Survey, it looks like six are a community whose numbers are going down the fastest because their birth rate or net population growth rate 
is the lowest but muslims are coming now and as hindus have come down muslims have come down not as much as the hindus but as their economic status improves that gap is narrowing at the same time even with that say 20 years from now 30 years from now you are looking at anything like 30 to 35 crore muslims in india do you then want that large a population of fellow indians who are angry who are sullen who are rebellious so rss is addressing the issue from that point of view that there is no need politically for further polarization that's why further alienation is counterproductive so try and prevent that further alienation and that's why this outreach and where is it coming from again you have to read rss literature the interesting thing with the bjp and the rss is that a lot about them is written a lot of their people write they talk that's the reason we'll be watching this the shara speech very very carefully as we do every year in fact usually on the shara day after the speech i also do an episode of cut the clutter because a lot of important political messages emerge from that so the thinking also is again i am reading i am reading from rss literature and it also comes from conversations with rss people senior rss people intellectuals close to the rss so the fuel for this outreach on behalf of the rss is also coming from the belief that india's biggest threat right now is an expansionary aggressive china expansionary aggressive china which is five and a half times india's economy which has armed forces much more powerful than india's in this situation india needs allies in the rest of the world and again in the rss's view i'm qualifying rss's view india cannot only rely on the west for support to balance china that to rely on the west would be very very fraught so india must expand its friendships and one of those areas of friendship is the arab world and for that to happen and for the indian outreach to, to arab world to be successful india needs reasonable peace between hindus and muslims in india if indian muslims are given the reason to be sullen and alienated and angry this will not serve the larger national purpose that is where the rss is coming from having said that i will again remind you watch the sarsang chalak's rss chief's speech on the shara day